much for too long. So now uh, we are getting more and more to see of these consequences. And uh, one such thing uh, I want to make you aware of, that is <coughs> the number percentage of pollution related deaths. Uh, these data are from World Health Organizations. Uh, and they show on the map, they show the areas where the number of deaths caused by environmental pollution are the highest. And you see, India is in the highest range. There's only Pakistan and uh, North Korea and some countries in Africa, uh, which are at the same level. And that means that uh, 20 to 27 percent of all deaths are related to environmental pollution. That means from uh, 100 persons, 20 or even 27 persons, uh, or you could say every fourth or fifth person who dies, that is because of environmental pollution. So that is really a large number. It shows the dimension of the problem. And it shows, yes, it is really necessary to do something against it. Uh, it is not only humans uh, who suffer, plants also suffer. Of course, plants uh, do not cry so much, uh, but um, you see that leaves are damaged and that makes plants more vulnerable to pests and diseases. Then photosynthesis is reduced. That means that there's less growth and also the yield goes down by, 20, uh, by 5 to 20 percent uh, according to recent studies. Now our present situation. Uh, Vedic wisdom is one topic of this conference. So how can Vedic wisdom help in this pre present situation? One possible solution for the overall pollution of the planet, of the environment, is given in the form of Agni Hotla and Oma organic farming. But, of course, uh, before we can go mainstream with this knowledge, uh, we have to do a thorough scientific evaluation. And in, in the following, I will show you what already has been done and uh, also will suggest some further research. Now, let us first look at what is homotherapy. Homotherapy is the science of feeling the atmosphere through pyramid fires to eliminate pollution and contamination. Or, as you also can say, you heal the atmosphere and the healed atmosphere heals you. The basis of homo, uh, homotherapy is Agnihotra. Uh, and Agnihotra is the smallest and basic homo healing fire tuned to the specific biorhythm of sunrise and sunset. It comes from the ancient most Vedic sciences of bioenergy, medicine, agriculture, and climate engineering. And at the right side, you see uh, our friend Bruce Johnson performing Agnihotra. And I think Bruce Johnson was present here today also uh, earlier in this webinar. Um, so for Agnihotra, we need First, one copper pyramid of fixed size and shape. Then the ingredients which we burn are dried cow dung, uh, pure cow dung, not mixed with buffalo uh, dung. Then ghee, clarified unsalted cow's butter. Again, it has to be from, uh, uh, it has to be a pure cow's ghee, so uh, make sure best to get it from uh, some dairy farm where they only have cows, no buffaloes, so that it's not mixed. Then you need some unpolished rice, unbroken pieces only, akshat. Some matras means a specific vibration and exact timings of sunrise and sunset. So why do we need these mantras and why do you uh, follow these exact timings? And this ancient knowledge it is said that at sunrise, the many fires, electricities, ethers, and more subtle energies come all the way from the sun to the planet Earth, to the place where the sun uh, uh, seems to rise. And that flood that has a subtle music in it, and the quintessential sound of that music is the mantras which we utter at that time. So that explains why we 
uh, need to follow the exact timing. And second, it need, uh, explains why uh, we uh, do this specific mantra. And also, if we would translate the mantras, say, in, into English or German, it wouldn't work. It has to be these Sanskrit mantras. Now, interesting enough, uh, I saw this slide recently from some American astrophysicist, and uh, he confirms what this ancient knowledge says. Because he says, at sunrise, million ampere currents head on toward uh, the planet Earth at sunrise, and at sunset, they are thrust out again. So he says the same thing. So the mantras we um, utter at that time in the morning, it's Surya ya swaha, Surya ya idam namama, Raja pataye swaha, Raja pataye idam namama. And um, after swaha, you add one portion of rice to which you apply a little bit of ghee to the fire. And then in the evening, it's Agnaye Svaha, Agnaye Idam Namama, Raja Pataye Svaha, Raja Pataye Idam Namama. So, what happens is a channel is created through all the atmosphere uh, and uh, prana energy, life energy, which sits above the our atmosphere comes down through this channel and the prana energy uh, creates an aura energy field around all plants nearby. This is why these plants get uh, <coughs> nutrition, uh, they get more energy, they uh, will be uh, di uh, disease resistant and then when the flame dies, you know, all this energy comes and is collected in the Agnihotra ash. This is why the ash has healing properties and can be used uh, in medicine, can be used in farming, can be used for purification of water. So now let us see what is, uh, what are the effects, what could be established, confirmed by modern science. Let's start with effect on the atmosphere. First thing, uh, it is very important to note that plants get most of their nutrition, not from the soil. Nowadays, most people just think of the soil, so they add uh, nutrients to the soil, but they forget that plants get most of their nutrition from the atmosphere, according to Vedic wisdom, and by the way, also according to, um, uh, to biodynam biodynamics, this method of Buddha of Steiner, uh, which is also quite popular now in India, they uh, get 75% or more of nutrition through the atmosphere. So if the atmosphere is uh, nutrition, uh, nutritious, then the plants uh, get a lot of protection and they get strong. But if the atmosphere is polluted like it is now, uh, the plants, they can't breathe uh, properly, they suffocate, so to say, and uh, that has a lot of detrimental effect on them. So, as I said before, growth is reduced and health is uh, <coughs> affected. Now, you see here, that was a simple experiment. It was done uh, in several universities, um, and you always get the same result. You just open a Petri dish uh, with some nutrient, uh, you open it before Agni Hotta and then you close the lid and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, put it away uh, for some time. And then you do the same thing after Agni Hotta. And you see at the left side, that is before Agni Hotta, and the right side, uh, uh, it uh, shows the result if you do it after Agni Hotta. You see a very big, big decrease in bacterial uh, uh, contamination if you just perform Agni Hotta. And that was just done once, you know, just one Agni Hotta. And um, so uh, if you would continue to perform Agni Hotta, then the bacterial con contamination would down uh, uh, nearly totally. 
but it's not only biological contamination means with microbes with bacteria but also chemical and physical uh, contamination which uh, we have uh, seen in an experiment done at North Maharashtra University in Chalgaon, which is close to your place. And there we measured at the uh, Department of Environmental Sciences, uh, SOx, NOx, and then particulate matter. And you see at the be beginning, there was uh, in uh, some of the um, parameters uh, uh, some increase but then it went down. All the parameters went down. There was a re reduction of 30 to 40%. Um, and uh, the initial increase is because there's some smoke, so of course there are some particles, yes. But then in the end, it went down. And then the professor uh, who was conducting the experiment said, okay, but maybe during the night, you know, anyway, there is some reduction because nobody's there. Uh, the experiment was done in the library. Nobody's there. So we did the same thing from morning to evening, and we had the same reduction. So it's really the effect of Akin that uh, all these parameters are getting uh, reduced. So that is a very important finding. And now uh, we uh, have um, started to do a longer experiment, you know, not just one acne hotter, because that was just one acne hotter, to do a longer uh, experiment uh, in cooperation with NIRI in Nagpur, this National Environmental um, uh, Research Institute. And um, uh, we had started that, but then, you know, the uh, coronavirus uh, restrictions came, so I could not go there again as planned. So I have to do that next time when I come to India to see what it is if we perform water for one week, say, how can we reduce uh, pollution? One very important thing is the negative ions in air. Uh, you know, negative ions are known to be an indicator for fresh air. Uh, and <clears throat> lack of negative ions indicates polluted air. So, uh, what I did, I went to one place uh, where an engineer, that was in southern Germany, an engineer had uh, developed such uh, uh, a device to measure negative ions in air. So I went there and he explained to him what I was going to do. And when I heard uh, uh, that is about Akne Hotter and he said, okay, uh, there's some fire, will there be some smoke? And I said, yeah, there will be some smoke. And he said, okay, if there's smoke, we don't have to do the measurement. You know, any smoke means that uh, the uh, percentage of negative ions goes down. And I said, okay, I don't know, uh, let's try. And I started, he measured the count of uh, negative ions. <coughs> Uh, he put the instrument uh, just above the, the Akne Hotta flame, distance of say a uh, half a meter. And then uh, I started the fire, I performed Akne Hotta. And to his utter surprise, the count of negative ions went down. He said, that's not possible because normally all smoke uh, reduces the uh, count of negative ions. So that also would be a good experiment to replicate because that uh, is very important for air purification. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, let us see what is the effect of Acne Hotter and Acne Hotter ash on water resources. There was one experiment done at uh, one college in uh, Pune and uh, they uh, did 10 replicates of that experiment. They used water uh, from one uh, very much polluted river in Pune, the Mula Muta River. But okay, anyway, uh, every river in Pune is quite, quite polluted. And um, uh, at, they took the water at a place where uh, municipal wastewater was mixed with the river water and 
what they did is they took this water and passed it through a cylinder where they, which was filled with Akinhotra ash. So the water passed through the cylinder of Akinhotra ash. And uh, you see the results, the in water quality, all the uh, parameters were very much improved, like conductivity, a reduction of 48%, tolid, uh, total solid content reduction of 90%, hardness uh, minus 84%. Biological oxygen demand minus 48%, chemical oxygen demand minus 7%, and most probable number minus 98%, and standard count plate, uh, plate count 93% less. So you see, in all the parameters, especially in the microbiological parameters, the water quality was much, much improved. And at the end, the water, and here you see the detail, uh, the results uh, in details. And in the end, the water was uh, drinking water quality according to uh, the standards of World Health Organization. Another report we got from Australia. Uh, some farmers uh, in an area which is very dry, uh, they put down a bore well in order to uh, get some water for their farm. They got water, which was lucky enough, but this water was highly saline and alkaline. Uh, so the pH was 9.5 and salinity 1150 parts per million. So what to do? What they did is they performed Akinhotra next to the bore well, regularly morning, evening, and added Akinhotra ash from time to time into the well. And after six months, uh, this water uh, became drinking water. The pH <clears throat> went down to 7.2 and salinity to 720 parts per million, which is uh, in the range of drinking water according to uh, World Health Organization. So just by performing Akinhotra, adding Akinhotra ash to this well, they saved their water supply and basically they saved their farm because without water in such a dry area, you're lost. Now, what is the effect of Akinhotra and Akinhotra ash on the soil? First, let me uh, uh, read you one quote. Uh, the quote is from a Sanskrit written text written about uh, 1500 BC, means more than three and a half thousand years ago from now. And it says, Upon this handful of soil, our survival depends. Because actually, it's just, you know, the last uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes of soil, uh, which uh, feeds us all. So upon this wow. handful of soil, our survival depends. Husband it, and it will grow our food and fuel, our shelter and surround us with beauty. Abuse it, and the soil will collapse and die, taking humanity with it. And that is exactly what is happening now. According to data of the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, already now one third of the world's soil has been degraded. One third. And they say, if we would continue with this uh, chemical way of farming, then the uh, global amount of arable and productive land would be only a quarter of the level of 1960. And that means uh, it will not be possible to feed this growing number of population. So it's really some urgent need to uh, heal the soil. So how can we do that? The soil needs to be rejuvenated first by homotherapy. Uh, and then in this rejuvenated soil uh, by Akinhotra and Akinhotra ash, different types of microorganisms, starting from the level of viruses, bacteria, fungi, algae, <laughs> thrive. And thus a healthy microflora and microfauna is created. We have uh, seen some results. One was, uh, that was an experiment done in 
uh, US more than 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, see, we all know that uh, phosphate is one of the main uh, um, nutrients. And normally, phosphate, there's enough phosphate in the soil. The only thing is, most of it is in non water soluble form. And if it's not water soluble, you know, it's not useful for plants. So normally, this is why farmers add this, uh, add this rock phosphate, which, by the way, uh, when you produce it, uh, it means a lot of pollution because they use uh, a very, uh, <clears throat> uh, very, very uh, hard chemicals, acids, in order to get uh, the phosphate out of the rock. Uh, but what he did is he added agni hotter ash to the soil, and the uh, per uh, percentage of water soluble uh, phosphate increased a lot, as you can see. Now the question was, how come, how does the agni hotter ash uh, change the uh, quantity of water soluble phosphate means, or how does the Agni Hotra Ash make this phosphate which was, which was there in the soil, make it water soluble. And one hypothesis was that this is due to some uh, microorganisms to phosphosolubilizing bacteria. By the way, this experiment was also repeated in uh, Germany and uh, they got the same result that Agni Hotra Ash helps to increase the water solubility of water of phosphorus. And uh, so the hypothesis was that some uh, uh, phosphorosolubilizing bacteria are responsible for this increase in plant available, uh, available phosphorus. And now this hypothesis has been confirmed by some experiment which was done at some college in Radnagiri, um, the place of the good mangoes. And, uh, uh, what they did is they added Agni Hotra ash to soil, just 1% of ash uh, to the soil, and they found out that uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria increased 100 times and phosphorus solubilizing bacteria even 1000 times. Interesting, at the same time, uh, fungal flora was controlled. This article has been published in International Journal of Science, Engineering, and Technology Research. So that explains why uh, phosphorus becomes water-soluble phosphorus in soil if you add water ash to the soil. Another uh, result we got from uh, India about sodic soil. One experiment was done in uh, one uh, KDK in uh, Unnao. Unnao is between Lucknow and Kanpur in India. And wheat was planted in three plots. One with agrochemicals, second organic with vermicompost, and third organic with vermicompost plus agni hotra ash. And the soil, test, soil pH was tested before and after the uh, project. So. The soil pH was uh, 9.86, and with agrochemicals, it didn't change. With vermicompost, organic vermicompost, it changed from 9.86 to 9.06, which is already quite a good result. But with uh, Agni uh, Hotra ash and vermicompost, uh, it went down uh, from 9.86 to 7.67 means more than two points in one season. It was just one season where they uh, grew wheat in that plot. Uh, and also they found more potash and phosphorus in uh, the uh, soil where Agni Hotta ash was used. So that was quite an impressive result. Now, some people might say, okay, Agni Hotta ash brings the pH down, but it's not like that. There was one farm in uh, Poland and the uh, soil was very acidic. Uh, the pH was 4.4. And uh, some agricultural uh, engineer from the government came 
uh, and uh, they asked him for advice and he said, okay, forget about it. You can't do farming there. So this, uh, in this uh, acidic soil, you know, nothing will grow. And still they tried. They used Akinhotra, Akinhotra ash. They added some compost and see what they grew. They grew all the vegetables. Nobody in that area gets such vegetables, uh, including tomatoes, which nobody grows there. So, and then they tested the soil again, and the soil uh, pH had come up from 4.4 to around 7. Now, uh, that is really some very important result, because uh, if you uh, see that in uh, India, you have approximately 7 million hectares of sodic and saline soil, uh, and uh, 2.5 million hectares alone in the Ganga plains of India. And then you have uh, more than 6 million hectares of strongly acidic soil, uh, means the pH is less than 4.5, similar to the Polish uh, land that was 4.4. And uh, this acidic soil you especially have in Arunachal Pradesh. So if these lands uh, together, it's 13 million hectares, could be reclaimed and made, be, uh, made productive, that would really help in India uh, to increase agricultural production and help to feed a growing number of people. And we have seen now the uh, quantity of uh, good fertile arable land is going down, down, down uh, uh, all the time. Now this would be one way uh, to increase this useful land again. So it would be really useful to start at least a small project or on either acidic or sodic soil, soil or best both. And uh, you know this investment for such an experiment is manageable. But if that shows good results as these initial uh, tests uh, showed, then this uh, gain is huge uh, because we are talking about uh, 13 million hectares in India alone. Other countries, of course, also. Now, what are the effects of Akinhotra on plants? We have seen effects on the environment, on atmosphere, water, soil. Now, what is the effect on plants? Uh, first is, um, we have seen that diseases in various crops in all the different climate zones in different uh, continents uh, can be controlled. Different continents, uh, actually all continents of the earth, uh, world, of this earth, um, especially in South America, because most Homa farm uh, had started in South America. And uh, you could control um, pests uh, like bully effort in sugarcane, mango hopper and mealybug in mangoes, ball warm in cotton. Also, it has been shown that in Akinhota increases yields in crops like soybeans, mangoes, bananas, different vegetables, and so on and so on. And uh, experiments have been done in different universities, uh, agricultural universities like Palampur, Coimbatore, Darwat, Esviasa, and so on. There's a documentation on uh, some results of such research. Uh, uh, some book uh, edited by uh, myself and Bruce Johnson, and there's a web page www.homafarming.com uh, where you see a lot of such reports. And more information you can always get by uh, contacting me through my email, which I give at the end of the presentation, and I will send you. Now, uh, there were some simple experiments. I mentioned that because they are so simple. That is germination of seeds. It has been done several times. Uh, even MSC theses have been written on that. Uh, but that is something uh, you could easily do with your students. Um, you just compare uh, germination of seeds. You can do that in some uh, Petri dish, just some tissue, uh, water, some seeds. Uh, then you use tap water, and then you use tap water and you add some Akinhotra ash. That is the right slide. slide, slide. And you see uh, there's a big change in growth. Uh, germination is much increased if you add Akinhotra ash. 
uh, but then uh, you might say uh, that okay, but any f has neutrons, uh, and that is correct. You know, you just burn some wood, and you will get uh, some neutrons. In it. So you will get some increase in uh, uh, in you will some get some increase uh, in the germination rate. Uh, so what we always do when we do experiments with Agni Hotter ash, we do not compare uh, Agni Hotter ash with just water, but we compare Agni Hotter ash with control ash. And what is control ash? Uh, you remember I said for Agni Hotter, we have this specific size and shape of copper pyramid. Then we burn uh, dried cow dung, pure cow dung. We burn uh, some ghee, pure ghee, plus some grains of rice. So for control uh, ash, we have some copper vessel, but not the pyramid shape, but also copper, because copper in the uh, combustion process can have some catalytic uh, effects. So we want to be uh, fair. Then we burn same thing, dried cow dung, ghee and rice, but we do not utter the mantras and we do not do it at the time of sunrise and sunset, sunset. But otherwise, these two things are same. And uh, we are also uh, comparing the chemical analysis. Until now, we could not see some really difference in, in uh, control in terms of chemi uh, chemistry. Uh, so you see, uh, with tap water, of course, the control ash gives better results than just tap water. As I said, there are some nutrients. But still compare the control ash with acne hotter ash, there's a big increase. So it's just the acne hotter itself which has that healing effect. And uh, so that was in germination of seeds. Then if you add acne hotter ash now, the, uh, that was an experiment done. Uh, what happens to the growth of plants if you perform acne hotter? Uh, so <clears throat> now that was, uh, they took uh, 20 germinated seeds already germinated um, and uh, uh, kept them for five days in same conditions, but in one room acne hotter was performed and the other room Agniotra was not performed. I would say the experiment was not done 100% uh, correct because if you perform Agniotra in this room, in next room, there will still be some effect. Uh, that has been tested in some experiment uh, in um, Santiago de Chile, the capital of Chile, and they could see that uh, uh, there were people, in, uh, there, were, uh, there were some psychological test, stress levels tested. And uh, if you just perform acne hotter in next room, and these people did not know about acne hotter, still their stress level was reduced. So you see that the effect of acne hotter goes through the walls, obviously. Still, you got some uh, results. If you're in the same room, definitely the effect is better. So you could see here uh, the uh, root length and shoot length they tested. And with Agni Hotra, root length was higher and shoot length was, length was higher. Also, nutrient content of plants. Uh, and that is very important because of environmental pollution now. Uh, we have, okay, we have uh, food, it looks good, uh, but it is without all the nutrients between a knee. And uh, this decline of nutrient contents uh, is a big problem, especially in medicinal plants. <coughs> and Ayurvedic doctors have said, okay, the medical property of plants goes down. So this is one ex uh, sample of uh, vanilla, uh, the vanillin content in vanilla. Uh, it was much higher uh, than uh, you could expect. So the lab doing this test at the end said that it's not possible. So they re uh, did the test again because the uh, result was 36% vanillin content 
uh, by weight. Normally they get 25%. If it's very high, they get 28%, but 36, it was not heard of. Uh, here you see um, an experiment done in Poland about nutrient content, dry metal sucrose total, sucrose reducing and organic uh, uh, acid. So all these uh, parameters, they were improved. They were best with Agnihotra on the Agnihotra farm, better than organic farm and much better than conventional farm. Effects of biodiversity. Biodiversity is one big problem also now. Uh, it's part of environmental pollution. And uh, last year, reports came out. Last, last year, reports came out in Germany. Uh, they did uh, an observation of the insect uh, population, and they found out that within 25 years, and a reduction of insect population of 70 per five, 75 percent happened. 75 percent less in, which is a very shows a very big problem. Of course, uh, birds, for example, they feed on insects. So if uh, insect population is down, then bird population is in, uh, affected, and so on and so on. In nature, everything is uh, you know uh, uh, woven uh, uh, together. So if you do one change here, there will be so many, many cha changes in uh, different areas. So that is really a big problem. And one of the scientists involved in that study, he said that's an ecological Armageddon, uh, ecological catastrophe. Uh, so how can acne hot aromatherapy help? Uh, of course, it's a vast uh, subject, but we have two uh, experiments, two uh, uh, research findings which I want to share with you. One that was done in India at the Namada River, uh, close to Maheshwa at the, uh, not so far away from Indore. And the scientist was Dr. Shailendra Sharma from a uh, principal of the Damnot College. They tested uh, the uh, invertebrates in the river, on the riverbed. And you see the two columns at the left side, these were done at stations upstream. And the two columns at the right side, these were done uh, at uh, stations, research stations downstream. And in the middle, it shows the results from our homotherapy Goshala, a homotherapy center where all, where all the fires are performed regularly. And you see uh, the increase uh, in the total number of these invertebrates. Quite astonishing. Similar result we get with butterflies. In the middle, you see the soma therapy, Goshala, has approximately 40% more uh, butterflies than in the others. And, and here you just see a photo of all the butterflies which are around in the soma therapy center. I want uh, at the end uh, mention just a little bit about human health. Because at the beginning I said, because of environmental pollution, you know, so many people are diseased and uh, even die just because of environmental pollution. So here, one example is the effect of uh, OMA uh, in the Bhopal uh, catastrophe. Uh, you uh, uh, must heard of this Bhopal catastrophe where uh, MIC gas leaked in the, uh, around midnight in some Union Carbide factory in Bhopal and tens of thousands of people died and so many were, uh, were uh, injured, and sick and so on. And, uh, but in the area there were some families where Akinhota was performed and nothing, nothing happened to them. So Akinhata seemed to uh, create a protective armor around these people where Akinhata was performed. Uh, so as uh, this Bhopal uh, accident was one of the worst worldwide, worst uh, catastrophes, industrial catastrophes, you see in that case, even Akinhata can help you. Uh, and then <clears throat> there are so many, uh, uh, many, reports on 
uh, showing that stress is relief, blood pressure is re uh, regulated, blood sugar level regulated, and thousands of reports which show healing of cancer, drug addiction, uh, depression, and even HRV. And on this webpage, www.homahealth.com, you can read all these reports. Now, uh, because everybody is affected by this COVID-19, and the question is, can I do the help with COVID-19 also? And yes, it can. Uh, it can help in First, it reduces the probability of getting infected. Second, it reduces pre-existing conditions which lead uh, to a heavy cause of uh, this COVID-19. Uh, means it uses uh, even if you get it, uh, the illness will will be not so severe, and uh, not so many people will die from that. And number three, it will support the body's immune system, and also it has a direct effect on the virus replication. So that is the important thing, also, especially now because everybody is concerned about COVID-19, and uh, everybody suffers from it because of all the restrictions uh, which we have. Now here we have some references. Here the context, some websites, my email address. So if you are interested and want to know more, you can just send me an email with this email address and I can send you more information. And that's it. I thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me again and thank you for listening and uh, I'm happy to answer questions and I'm happy to also send you information if you want to do more. The only thing is, it's a very wonderful method, but it's